All right, welcome back, boys and girls. What we are going to be talking about now is a continuation of the last lesson. This is going to be Unit 8 CRT Preparation. This is Part 2. So uh, if you are following along, you'll notice that in Part 1, we dealt with uh, standard deviations that came from, um, from populations. So we were getting these sigmas. And we are also dealing with probabilities. So these are done. Okay, so we're not going to go back to these. And then this is a, so what we are going to be dealing with in this lesson is this middle equation in which you'll take note has a, uh, a sample standard deviation. And more importantly, it is dealing with a TC because this is a from, coming from a sample. Okay, it's not a uh, it's not a sigma or a probability, uh, so we have to use a t table. However, the confidence interval itself uh, is going to be the same. Okay, so let's go ahead, take a look at our example, and make some of these uh, needed adjustments. All right, so the first thing that we read here is, okay, a study was conducted to determine the average amount of money a family spends over the holiday season. Okay, 81 random families. So our sample size was 81 families. Okay, uh, was surveyed and found that the average um, uh, amount spent, spend, spent over the uh, holiday season was $708. So the average of our sample, so that's an X bar, not a mu, is um, what was it? $708. Okay, 708 with a standard deviation. Notice that this is the big difference. This is a sample standard deviation. It's not a sigma, but a sample standard deviation of 265.45. Okay. Um, we want a confidence interval that will uh, determine mu. Uh, so we are going to make a 75% confidence. All right, now, um, bringing this into play right here, bringing this, uh, which I snipped right here. Um, so bringing this formula into play we have to do a couple different things. Um, so we have the S, we have the N, but we have to use this T. So again, it is not the Z table, but rather your T table. So this is your T table right here. Now, again, how to properly uh, find the TC in this situation, we need to observe this little teeny tiny box right there, which just stands for the degree of freedom and the confidence. All right, the degree of freedom um, in our class is determined um, by uh, n minus 1. So I'll write that down here. So the degree of freedom in our class is n minus, jeepers, creepers. I'm going to just do this. Okay. The degree of freedom is equal to n minus one. It's a lot more neat. Okay, so uh, back to our uh, page here, we see that uh, our n in this sample is 80. So that would imply that the degree of freedom is 81. So uh, that would imply that our degree of freedom in this situation is 80. So the degree of freedom is 80 right there. The degree of freedom is 80. C right here, the C part of that is the confidence that we want. And so the confidence that we want is 75%. So 75% is 0.75. So where these two things intersect is the, uh, the TC that we are after. So that is 1.159. 1.159 is our degree of freedom in this situation.
Again, want to make sure that I'm not making any mistakes. Yep, 1.159. Okay. So now we have all the things necessary. Uh, so uh, this is going to be um, PC of S divided by the square root of N. And I think I made all of the ends to be happy-go-lucky square roots. Uh, so it makes it a little bit easier if you don't have a, a, a grandioso calculator. Um, I think all of these ends are going to be square rooted quite well. Like, so for instance, the square root of 81 is 9. Uh, so when I do this calculation, it's 265.45 divided by the square root of 81, a.k.a. 9. Okay. Um, and I think I wrote most of the problems like this. And then I multiply by the TC, and huzzah, there it is. So this is absolutely accomplishable um, using a rudimentary calculator. You don't need a fancy calculator to do this. So I know that a lot of people are using it as an excuse on why they're not doing their homework. It's like, oh, I don't have this calculator. Well, you don't need this calculator. This is absolutely doable without it. So, um, so that is that. Okay, on to the confidence interval itself. So the confidence interval that we need to use right here is this guy right there. That's our confidence interval. This is the confidence interval that we need to use. So that is going to be X bar minus E and then X bar plus e. All right, that should be our confidence interval right there. Again, that's a, it's a mu. There you go. That's your confidence interval. And as I said, this uh, this uh, assignment is all dealing with S's. All dealing with S's. And also notice how the ends are good square roots. So the square root of 16 is 4, square root of 9 is 3, et cetera, et cetera. Like a lot of these ends are good square roots. Um, there are five problems. They shouldn't be a, uh, a big deal. Again, do your assignment. These are very powerful assignments as far as your grades are concerned. Uh, so again, encourage your classmates to be doing them, especially if your classmates happen to be failing. Um, you know who they are pretty much. Um, reach out to them. Make sure they're doing their assignment um, because uh, their graduation depends upon it. So uh, really reach out and really be a family in this kind of situation. Um, and so, yeah, I will hit you up next time with Unit 9. Unit 9 will uh, be pretty much the end of our lessons. Um, so there will probably be a couple uh, lessons on Unit 9. Uh, keep paying uh, doing these lessons, uh, submitting them, and uh, uh, doing your attendance. So I appreciate it, everybody. Thank you, and have yourselves a good day.